dystopian times. In a world of politics dominated by the strange, the deranged, and outright insane, we'll now take a moment to shine a light on the craziest of what politics has to offer. This is your weekly dose of stupidity. Now, this week, we have a gentleman who walked into a fast food restaurant. They have a mask requirement. <laughs> he was asked to put on a mask, and not only did he protest, he whipped out his penis and peed on the floor. Take a look. <laughs> Ma'am, you do not have a grade. You do not have a grade. What are your rules? Why? It's not a PC policy. PC policy says you have to observe exemptions. Fuck you, psychopath, says the man who pissed on the floor. So, <laughs> folks. <laughs> the counter. He pissed on the counter. It's oh. disgusting. Can I just he point out? He's projecting. That's some Olympic level projection right there. Wow. Yeah. Th those fast food employees do not get paid enough to deal with him. I don't care if they were making $2,000 per hour. There's no amount of money that is worth it to like deal with that level of delusions. And I mean, this is a microcosm of a bigger issue. We've seen these weird anti-mask meltdowns across yeah. the country. I have a video coming out tomorrow of anti-mask parents showing up to school boards across the country, threatening violence, assaulting people. Um, on top of that, we have this phenomenon where as these mask mandates get reinstituted by governors, you have local sheriff departments penning these letters, grandstanding, basically saying, we're not going to enforce your mask mandates when it's most of the time up to businesses because, you know, there, there's not really action at the federal level to enforce mask mandates. So, I mean, I don't necessarily know that our commentary can add to that wonderful video that is going to send me into another doomer week. But Jordan, um, what are your thoughts on the state of uh, American life? <laughs> you know, Mike, I have traveled, <laughs> traveled for six years, probably, I don't know, probably been to about 35 states. There's a lot of, lot of empty land in America, a lot of empty land uh, where if you really, you know, wanted to do some organizing, uh, you could really remove well i don't say remove but you know just kindly move a certain swath of the population to that land where they could live uh you know just put a wall up as trump would say uh and they could live unvaccinated massless pee wherever they want um and you know if they don't even want to have a government there that's fine uh as long as they're walled in because again i said it earlier this is not about masks and it's not about vaccines it is about the insane culture war that you know yeah. Frankly, we don't have time, but like a lot of it has been perpetuated by the media over the last 30 years. Fox, Rush Limbaugh to a less, you know, on, on the other side, uh, you know, MSNBC, now CNN, but mostly right wing lunatics and the Republican Party, which has really become kind of a, a quasi media apparatus uh, masquerading as government. So right. uh, I think, you know, I would say to that guy and others, um, if you want to live free, go free air quotes uh you know good luck to you <laughs> yeah yeah uh tina do you want to jump in here because i i, I, I saw this video and i was speechless i actually am not shocked i mean that's the thing I, i'm not I shocked agree either. With, <laughs> i agree with what jordan's saying here this is a group of incredibly radicalized folks so you've got proud boys you've got neo-nazis you've got trump supporters they've all sort of coalesced together in this sort of a cult that they're in and they're just jumping from cause to cause mindlessly. I don't even think like if you'd asked several of these people if they were super anti-vaccine 10 years ago, I doubt they would have said yes. Yet here we are. So they're very radicalized. I think it's a culture war, culture war issue, as Jordan is saying. And um, it's just really sad that this is what America is like. This is America. Like 
this is where we're at. Like, it's, right. it's amazing to me that, yeah, I know it's shocking, right? It's shocking that it's gotten this ridiculous, but, but here we are. Um, and I don't think we've seen the worst of it yet. Um, I think we're going to see more violence in the streets as well. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's, it's, it is a sign of the times. It is dystopian, as the name of the show is stating. And I think it's going to get much worse because these guys are incredibly radicalized. And when this is done, they'll just find something else to get behind. Because really, nobody's taken away your freedoms, folks. These were folks that were fine with private businesses being able to make their decisions previously, right? It's a private business. They should be able to say, this is what I want in my establishment, right? But now that it's you know, well, you're telling me I have to wear a mask and that's against my personal freedom. Now that they framed it in that sort of right wing rhetoric, it's an entirely different conversation. They were, but here's they the were thing. very they were very happy with, uh, you know, right wingers not selling cakes to gay people. That's right. right. Exactly. exactly. I mean, the right. hypocrisy that is astonishing. Exactly. So they yeah. pick and choose where that applies. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm really thinking of doing an app or at least a Facebook page about the businesses in Asheville that are not enforcing the mask mandate. I mean, I'm trying to, I go into these businesses and I have one of these encounters every day. I was in the Ingalls, which is the supermarket. And this was the first day, so they could have a pass. Maybe they didn't find out about it. But one of the guys at the cash register had a mask, the other one didn't. And I said, you know, they just declared a state of emergency in Buncombe County. And you're supposed to be, we're supposed to be wearing masks indoors now. And they kind of ignored me. And as I was walking out, I turned back and I said, it's the law. And as I almost walked out the door, I heard him mock me. It's the law, you know? And then wow. my, my son's own store, he's working in the Ace Hardware. Hi, James. Um, he, I went in there the other day and, you know, the, the women behind the cash register, they were wearing masks. But this guy that was walking right in front of me, customer, was not masked. And I said... You know, we're supposed to be wearing masks. And I'm so tentative now. It's usually not like me, but I never know <laughs> if these people are going to hit me with a baseball bat or not. Exactly. So I no, we're supposed to be wearing masks now. And he said, oh, do you want me to do this? And he took his T-shirt and went above his mouth, you know, and then and then he gets to the counter and the, and the um, woman says, oh, you don't have to worry. I've had both my vaccines. And I said, um, hmm but you could still be a carrier. And right. she said, I don't want to hear your opinion. Oh <laughs> you know? It's like, yeah. and, and, it's and like I don't the, know how much we can do as individuals. You know, I feel like we got to start boycotting these places. Get the word yeah, out. I don't, I guess I don't understand why they're like so severely politicizing what should be only a public health crisis, but that is what they're choosing to do. And it's become so problematic. We had uh, a couple of them show up at different Target stores wearing women's underwear over their heads. Wow. Yeah. And they said, so, this is a mask. You have to let us in. And I'm like, I, why are you doing wow. this? I mean. Yeah, that's intense. Yeah, like, so the idea, it. the idea of like, so you said Nashville and, you know, one of the Asheville. big things that. Yeah. So, so, so Asheville. Like, okay, I thought Tennessee. I, so it's not Tennessee. Mm. You're not. Okay. North Carolina. So, North Carolina. North Carolina. Okay, fair enough. So, 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 so that's a fair state. It still fits, fits my, my conversation about this point is like, I wish like the moral consistency and the hip, uh, we've already talked about hypocrisy already once already today, but the hypocrisy of how we manage things, for example, right. um, since I'm a trans rights activist and I, you know, work for a national nonprofit and a, and a national researcher on this stuff, you see things like in Tennessee and then in, in North Carolina, they actually are like forcing businesses to do things and the law and the government says that's the way it is so when you say oh you know uh the the school says that you're not allowed to send your kid into a you know the sport where they affirm the gender that they are but if you say no it's my personal freedom to send my kid or no it's my personal freedom like in arkansas to give my kid hormone replacement therapies they're like no it's not it's the government's right to be able to control that aspect of your body 
and not let you do the things that you want to do. But yet then they'll go and say, oh, you can't have a mask mandate when they used to make a joke about, you know, no shoes, no shirt, no service. Yeah. I remember I lived in Texas and I remember the Texas conservative values that I was raised with. And like everybody was like, oh, you got to be respectful. You got to listen to the business. The business can kick you out if they don't want you right. to be there. No, yeah. And we have the right to refuse service to anyone. I remember being raised with businesses having that right to refuse right. service to anyone. So now all of a sudden when businesses start doing that to them, that's yeah. when they start getting mad. And, and, and what Jordan said about the bakers, like, it's like, oh my God, like the whole world ended because somebody was forced to be a part of that public space. <laughs> and now right when they yeah. feel like they're being pushed out of a, a, an establishment, like minorities in this country have been doing for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. Now, now all of a sudden, because you don't want to wear a piece of cloth in your face. Now you have, now you suffer the oppression of the, of the minorities that have to deal with this on a daily basis since the beginning of this country's founding and before, like it, mm -hmm. it, it's like, it's just like, it's so infuriating, especially for me as, as a woman of color that is trans, right? Yeah. That has all of these minority intersections and, and people that don't want to wear a freaking cloth on their face literally try to say that their oppression trumps everything that anybody uh, has ever faced, but yet critical race theory. Yet, you know, <laughs> cops aren't racist. Oh yeah, right. none of that exists, but yet you oppress me because I don't have a mask. You're a tyranny. You're a fascist. You're a communist. They'll say both on the same time. Yeah, they'll say You know, hilarious. <laughs> you know and, and so that's the world that it, it, it is for like people who realize like these people are literally crying oppression in the worst ways when and our country has been founded on oppressions of minorities. And now because some Karen or some guy wants to just say, I don't want to wear a mask. It, it's just, I know I'm like stream of consciousness angry about this, but and no, I love it. I love it. <laughs> the, the hypocrisy so, is annoying. It's and, so, and a lot, and a lot of them are comparing it to the Holocaust. Oh, they, exactly. they, they, they absolutely so are, which is so offensive. It's so offensive. It's not a genocide folks. It's a public health crisis. Just stop yeah. that right now. That's so yeah. infuriating.